Rita. <coughs> Um, I have problems with uh, understanding it means to see ourselves emotionally as God sees us. So how does God see us? Can you say 10 different... The problem with problem. me telling you about how God sees you is you will still absorb it as an intellectual argument rather than actually feeling it. Okay. Right? We, to actually make this transition, we've got to start feeling how God sees us. And when we start feeling how God sees us, we don't ask questions about it of other people because we can now feel it. Yeah. Do you understand? But there's also something like God sees us warts and all. Yes. So how does God view your error? How does God view, view my error? Yeah. So he sees error within all of us. How does he view this error? How do you think he views the error? Um, as something I can be repentant about it? No, let's look at how he sees it. I'll just swap this around. Let's look at how he sees it rather than what you've got to do about it. Because yeah. you just told me what you think you've got to do about it rather than what, how God sees it. So what I'll do is I'll... I don't know if can I do that. It's just a bit stiff. I have to undo that to do that. It's easier to do this. It's a good question, reader. All right, but let's look at the answer to it. How does God see us? So, how does God? I I want to see say your error. I want to say on the natural love path, I had all those beautiful things, how I am and who I am, and it was really uplifting. And, and I, I agree with all that. So God sees the beautiful creature that you are, yep. Yeah. But when you get angry with others, does God think it's beautiful? No. Okay, so, so you see... Well, when on the natural love path, I completely overlooked it. Of I didn't course, even notice course. it was see, there. See, you see what the natural love path does? Because it's our definition of ourselves that we're seeking on the natural love path, what we do is we only look at the good things, <laughs> generally. We look at the bad things for other people, but for ourselves we only look at the good things. That's how we treat things with the, with the natural love path. God does see us as a beautiful creature, but how does he see the anger in us? What, what does he feel about the anger that's within you? Can you tell me? Can you see? You can't tell me. I am distancing me. myself from oh. him as soon as I am angry. And so I'm what not. does God feel about that? I'm not sure if he feels sad. Well, no, you're now guessing. Yeah. Because you don't feel what God feels about it. Yeah. Can you see? And this is the problem we have is that we don't actually feel what God feels about things. We try to guess what God feels. And that's a big part of our problem. Because we're, we're guessing, but we don't actually believe it. So, so let's, let's look at what... There's a difference between what we feel about that question and what we think about that question. Now, what do you think about that question? Well, how does God feel about your anger? Let's put that as the topic. How does God feel about your anger? We think that God feels what? What do you think God might feel? Distant. God feels distant, you think? Okay. Just write down everything, anything you feel God feels. I never thought about how God feels. <laughs> exactly. A lot of times, we'd, and we don't need to think about it because it's impossible to actually think about what somebody feels. You have to actually feel what somebody feels <laughs> to know. But we often think things. So we often think that God gets angry with us for being angry which is a bit hypocritical when you think about it. <laughs> but anyway, we often believe that, do we not, as human race? We feel that God feels... Sorry? What was that? I can... Disappointed is a good one, yeah. Disappointed. Yep. Well, we see, yeah, some of us think that God feels compassion. Notice some of these are very different <laughs> to others. We, can you see when we think, we are not very logical. <laughs> the irony is that we pride ourselves with using our mind 
to be logical, but can you see, we think, wow, there's quite a few different things, I think, some of which are completely opposites to each other. And the reason why we have to use our mind to sort all this out is because we do not know what God feels about us when we're angry. Can you see that? If we knew what God feels about us, we'd actually feel it every time we're angry because we can communicate with God through our feelings, so we would know. So does God feel love for us when we are angry? Yes, God does feel love for us. So if I then feel annoyed about myself because I have so when you my anger. So when you feel angry with yourself for being angry, which many of you do feel, you get really annoyed that you're actually angry, you are out of harmony with how God feels about you when you're angry. Can you see that? And in that place, you're not being humble. Can, by our definition of humility being we emotionally feel what God feels about us at any point in time, we are not humble in that place. When we're angry with ourselves about being angry or angry with ourselves that we were unsuccessful or angry with ourselves, God doesn't feel that. God feels love, compassion, kindness, understanding, These are the emotions God has when you're angry, <laughs> which is the opposite of what we often think God has. Gary? Does God feel a um, withdrawal of love from us when we're angry? No. That's what we think here. So we write that in what we think, withdraw love, uh, with, withdraw, withdraws love. Can you see how these are the things often that our, aside from that one, these are the things often that our parents react when we're angry. Can you see that? And so we think God's going to act in the same manner as our parents. Or then somebody comes along like AJ and has a talk to you about God and God's feelings about you. And so we talk about the feelings God actually has, these ones. And so then when I ask you the question, what do you feel God feels when you're angry? You then ream those off of your mind which is the only part of you that these things have entered it's like just it's like going to a school learning things by memory and then when you're asked a question saying it all back regurgitating it that's how we are so loose to learning on the planet is it not many of you got your university degrees by doing exactly that reading some books listening to some lectures writing some things down and then regurgitating it when it came, when there was a need for it to come back. And how good you were at regurgitating it made you get a distinction compared to a pass or a fail. Right? Give up regurgitation. <laughs> Nothing ever tastes good regurgitated. Haven't you noticed that? You're right, basically eating somebody else's or your own vomit. That's what regurgitation is, is it not? Let's be frank about regurgitation. We've got to stop regurgitating. Even what you hear from me needs to be stop regurgitating it. Stop parroting it as if we understand. We either feel it or we do not feel it. So we could say, well, you know, Jesus told me that love, God feels love, compassion, kindness and understanding when, when I'm angry that God feels those feelings for me. That's what Jesus told me. I don't believe a word of what he's saying. I feel what God feels is distant, angry, disappointed, and withdraws her love as a result of me getting angry. In other words, God punishes me when I get angry. That's what I feel. It's, in, it's, it, it's really immaterial what we think. The material point is what we feel. Gary? I mean, does God feel a withdrawal of love from us when we're angry? Uh, on the other opposite end? Yes, yeah. certainly. Whenever we're angry, we automatically withdraw love from all people, not just from God. So God certainly feels no love coming from us in that moment. Certainly. Is God upset about that? No. Uh. God has <laughs> compassion, kindness and understanding about that. Does it make sense? 
But certainly every single time we are angry or in fear, we withdraw love from every single thing in our environment in that moment. Love is no longer present. This is the main cause of many of our personal emotional injuries as children. Every time our parents were angry or afraid, we no longer felt loved in that moment. And because we no longer felt loved in that moment, we were confused. And often our parents then said to us or cho chose to demonstrate to us through our or their actions that we actually were at fault for that particular thing. That we were the person to blame for the withdrawal of love in that moment. And so we were often even blamed or punished for them withdrawing love from us. And so we even believe God does that as a result. If we go to turn up the back there, just uh, in blue. Yep. So when I'm angry, um, I still need to feel and experience that anger so yes. that I can get down to the next part of it. Certainly. But I also need to be loving, kind, compassionate and understanding of yourself of myself that I need to go through this so that I can become a better person yes. and open myself up more to yes. God. Yes. It doesn't mean to dump it on everybody else, but understand that every time you're angry, which is already in a way a dumping on other people anyway, so you're already doing it, we need to understand that God feels these things and eventually we will actually feel the same way about ourselves as God feels about our anger. So, so you know how many people in religious, different religious denominations around the earth, whether they be Christian or not, they all have this idea that God punishes you for certain actions. That's because they don't feel God. It's because they think of God. And they think that that's what God must be. Because if they felt God, if they actually could feel God's emotions for them, they would realise that in that moment they don't feel anger or disappointment or disapproval or withdrawal of love from God. They only feel things about themselves. You'd be able to tell the difference between those two states. <laughs> 